As I've already mentioned before, in this tutorial, we'll go through some steps to execute lab simulation. Here you can see the outline of those steps. Firstly, we will focus on designing a suspension model in AIMSIM. Then we will integrate all the subsystems into an overall vehicle model and configure it such that it will be a virtual representation of the real race car. Following that, we will import the track of interest in AIMSIM and make use of that along with SimCenter's AIMSIM path following control and the configured vehicle model to simulate the car going around the track. Finally, we will use different virtual sensor blocks to collect the data for parameters of interest from the simulation and also do some post-processing. So let's start with the suspension design. The two most common automobile suspensions which are currently used in the industry are the double wishbone suspension and the McPherson strut. But mainly for race car applications, the common suspension model is the double wishbone because it allows the car to be set up much lower than the McPherson strut and also because of the availability of multiple links to the chassis, you have more freedom to change these hard points to get the desired performance from your suspension. SimCenter AMSIM has a repository of pre-built solutions which can be directly used by configuring the parameters to suit a specific uh, application. So to design our suspension model, we need not build it from the ground up. We can open the double wishbone suspension template. So let's do that. Going back to our suspension, we can go to help and demo help. You can either go through the existing paths to find the model or search for it here using the double wishbone. So once you click that, so this is the help document for the double wishbone suspension template and how to go about using it. AIMSIM's repository of solutions have very detailed account of such documents which explain how to use each and every model. So they are very helpful when you're trying to learn the software anew. So we can open this model by going to this open this demo section. If you click on this, it will ask you whether you want to create a local copy. You can just select yes and select a directory where you want this to be stored. The double wishbone one suspension or any other suspension model in AMSIM is built mainly by using different components from the 3D mechanical library. So if we try and find the 3D mechanical library. So this double wishbone suspension template is uh, built by using these uh, models from the 3D mechanical library. The model is comprised of the different mechanical arms in a double wishbone suspension and how they are linked to each other. In addition to that, there are some blocks that lets the user define inputs to our suspension model which are used to impose the vertical motion of the wheel, horizontal motion as a function of the steering rack movement and also to simulate the forces and moments acting on the wheel center. Subjected to these inputs, the behavior of our suspension model is quantified by the model's outputs, toe, camber, self-rotating angles, also the wheelbase and half-track variations. Now that we have a decent understanding of the functioning of the model, we will proceed and configure the model to represent our suspension system. So let's skip to the parametric mode. To do this, we need to define the locations of the suspension hard points in a 3D coordinate frame. So we can do this by manually selecting each 3D mechanical body and changing the locations here. Instead of defining the parameters here by going from block to block, we can make use of AIMSIM's global parameters option. If you go to the hard point locations, we need to mention how all the hard point locations are arranged in the 3D coordinate frame. This varies from suspension to suspension based on your suspension design. This is very useful, especially because there might be a certain variable which is defined twice in the whole sketch. For example, in this model, you can see that there is ODX, uh, Y and Z. And even in this model, there is ODX, Y and Z. So if you wanted to change manually without the use of global parameters, then you need, you need to change the ODE's 3D location in these two models. So it's twice the amount of work. But if you use the global parameters option, you can change ODE once and this label is replicated here in these two models. So 
the change will be reflected in both the models. Once we define the locations of the heart points as per the labels shown in the help document, the predefined equations in the other sections of this global parameter model So the equations that are defined here compute the other required parameters automatically. So all you need to do is mention how all the hard point locations are arranged in the 3D coordinate frame relative to each other. Once you complete that, just click apply. We can visualize that by using the six degree of freedom assembly component that the template has. So if you double click on this block, Imsim will automatically arrange these hard point locations and build a 3D model for you which you can use to visualize your suspension model. Imsim automatically uses the hard point locations that you specified and builds this 3D assembly for you. Let's close this. So now that we have mentioned the hard point locations and built a suspension model, next we need to define the inputs. Based on the application, we will have an idea of the range of motion of the wheel and the steering racks that will affect the movement of a suspension assembly. So we define the input signals accordingly. To define how the wheel vertical motion is changing with time according to your own analysis, you need to go uh, into the signal block and specify the parameters which defines that graph of how the wheel vertical motion is supposed to change. The same can be done with the imposed rack motion of the steering and also the kind of forces that you anticipate your suspension to go through. After defining the inputs to this model, we can move on to the simulation mode and edit some run parameters for our simulation. Before we run the simulation, you need to make sure that the final time is more than the time it takes for the model to go through the ranges of motion that you've specified. Here I selected 60 seconds. So let's just click OK for now. And now we can run a simulation. After the simulation is complete, we can reopen the 60 degree of freedom assembly block to visualize the behavior of a suspension when it is subjected to the specified inputs in the form of an animation. So once we open this, we can select uh, multiple views from the tree on the left side. Let's select the top view for now. Here you can select the play option and this will show you the animation of your suspension model going through the range of inputs that you, we have specified. This is the steering rack input that we have, we have specified and the next step would be the vertical motion of the wheel. You can speed up the animation if you want. So after the animation, you can close this. Animation is just a visualization tool, but we as engineers are more interested in the parameters that define the functioning of the suspension system. We can access these parameters from the predefined outputs of the model that I've shown you earlier. So if you go to this output section, you can select this model and access parameters like toe, camber and self rotating angles. You can drag and drop them in the sketch area to see how they vary with time. If you wanted to know how these parameters vary with the inputs that we've specified, you can do that too. Just drag and drop, let's say camber angle and if you want to see how it's varying based on the vertical motion of our wheel, you can drag this and overlay on the existing camber angle plot. Now we can see how the camber angle is varying with a certain amount of the vertical motion of the wheel. You can do this for any parameters uh, that are computed here. You can uh, visualize how the wheelbase is varying or even how the half track is varying. These parameters are computed by the equations defined underneath this component which is also called as a super component. Let's open this and see what's underneath. So here we can see that the model takes in the inputs that are coming from uh, ports 1 and 2 and computes uh, the parameters of toe, camber and self rotating angles. Let's go back to our main level and if we are using this pre-built template from AIMSIM, the plots of our interests are already pre-saved for us. So if we go to the plot section and select the KNC bench input output, you can see that these are pre-built 
So you can see the toe, camber and self-rotating angles. You have wheelbase and half track. These are the imposed vertical motions that we have specified. Until now, we have configured our suspension design in AIMSIM and visualized the results for a fixed design and one set of inputs. As an extension to this, we can use AIMSIM's batch runs option to carry out a parametric analysis on, say, different positions of a particular hard point. Let's close this and you can find this option in configure and study parameters. So here you need to import the parameter that you want to do your uh, parametric analysis on and then you need to specify the sets that you want this uh, parametric study to include. We're not going to do this now but I just want to give you an idea of how the results of this parametric analysis will look like. So here, uh, these are the results for parametric analysis of the spindle link of the upper wishbone with the chassis. So I've varied the point K by increments of 0.5 inches. And I've plotted the toe angle and camber angle uh, for all the study parameters that I've included in, in this analysis. So in this section, you can see how uh, the toe angle is varying at different locations of the point K. This is called the roll section because there's a 4 inch uh, steering rack displacement and in this section you can see the effect of the bump which is uh, 1 inch vertical displacement of the wheel center. You can go about doing this by accessing AMSIM's help documents which give you a step by step uh, process of how to do a parametric analysis. We are going to come back to the suspension model that I've shown you earlier, but now we will move on to configuring the vehicle model.